What is up, players? It is I and I, what's like the great shaman? And today I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing this piece of kit here called the Goblin Skulkers Yamon. So let's open up this package and get right into it. Why So, real simple man, you get three bodies and three heads, no options, no variations, it's just what it is is what it is man. You get four bases, so you get one extra in case you bump a cloud, slip one under the back seat of your couch or something and you cannot find it, you get one extra man. Yeah man, Wobo stay, take it away me brother. Alright. That's right, Wartzag, you get three bodies. Now the Goblin Skulkers, the Nasty Skulkers, I remember when when they were first announced for the, or when they were first rumored, when we were first rumored to have Goblin Assassins in our, you know, in our rule book, <clears throat> in our 8th edition rule book, we were, uh, a lot of people were like, ooh, that is pretty awesome, Goblin Assassins. Just like Skaven, the Dark Elves. Um, and I remember the rumors at the time were spreading like wildfire, everybody was talking about how these were going to be game changers and how regular goblins would be viable again. Most people don't use regular goblins because um, they're just not points effective, I guess. And the models themselves are so old, they don't have a hand weapon and shield option on the actual models themselves, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, the Night Goblins do. The Night Goblins have all the options, but the regular Goblins only have the option to make a spear and shield and um, a short bow. Except for, I think you get enough bits to make a champion. So let's take a look at, at what the bodies, first of all, look like. These are the old metal models. I'm not sure if they make them in Finecast yet. If you order them from Games Workshop, you're going to have to go to their collectors site, I think. So here's our first guy. You get one very smooth looking cape that he's holding up very villainously. Muhahaha. Option number two. And what I'm liking is, is I'm not really seeing much flash on these models. number two looks like this. He's got kind of like a little uh, corded jerkin on the front. That might be fun to paint. And that is one of these uh, furry, fuzzy, fuzzy capes. And look, he's got a he's got a little knife that he's hiding back here as well. So he's got one at the front, one at the back. So I remember when these models first came out, I bought them up. And then everybody started play testing them and <clears throat> with the rules and kind of just like the arachnoroks they turn out to be a you know kind of fluffy fun thing that you, you just don't really put into your army unless you're going for that kind of a list alright here's option number three I just clipped off a little piece of flash that was connecting the knife to his foot this one is actually my favorite model <clears throat> for the simple fact that he's got a fuzzy cloak just like guy number two but he's got both knives in the front so that when you're looking at him from the front you see the smooth underside of the cape and then the backside yeah so as you can see really not that much flash a couple little pieces of it but not interminable and the mold lines are really I don't see any any really glaring ones where they would usually be. Here's one on the shoulder of the cape that I can see running right down the center. But yeah, like compared to fine cast or even the plastic models, 
I don't really see any harsh mold lines. Let's take a look at the heads. So we've got one guy over here on the right. Focus, Igor. Just a little bit. Okay, so you've got one guy over here who's wearing like a little little face mask. I think that is really awesome. That is the coolest. He's wearing like a little, you know, Batman mask. <gasps> Batman. Hmm. Ideas. Let me paint one up like Batman. Then the center guy over here has got this little expression on his face. Oh. And this one, you can clearly see the mold line in these guys right through the center on the tops of their heads. So for newer modelers and gamers, you just want to be careful when cleaning these. Everybody should always clean their mold lines off. I don't, you know, I, I know some of you are lazy. Sometimes I get lazy and I don't clean them off all the way. But you can just take the back of your hobby knife and run it across. That's a helpful tip that uh, one of my commenters left me a while back and I've been doing it ever since. Just kind of scrape your line, your your knife back and forth across the line. And what this does is it doesn't gouge holes into the model if you that you would if you were using the the sharp edge. And you also don't have a danger of cutting yourself if the knife slips and runs into your thumb like that. You can't cut yourself unless you have very sensitive skin. Um, yeah, and let's look at guy numero three. Numero san, if you're Japanese. Oh, he's got another mask. I think all do all of these guys have masks? This guy in the middle doesn't look like he does, but two guys on the edges. See how you see this flap like right over his cheek? Kind of makes it look like he's wearing a mask. So let's take a look one more time and I'll leave it up here for you to see. Two guys on the ends definitely look like the coolest. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now, boys and girls, is I am going to clip these guys off, glue them on, and then we'll come back and I'll let you know what my experiences are and what my final thoughts are on these nasty skulker models. No! 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 Mon! I! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Whew! I hit the record button and just as I was reaching my hand back to pick my skulkers up, I knocked Wurtzag down. I'm so sorry, Wurtzag. He fell off the table and like fell on the floor and I was afraid his leg and staff was gonna snap off again. Why you be dropping me, man? Why you be dropping me like I drop mad beats, man? That ain't cool, man. I and I not be liking that very much, man. Now here it is. Lord of mercy. So sorry about that, Wurtzag. All right, so we're back with our skulkers. Built them up. And um, the, the worst thing about building them up is using the super glue. You have to use super glue. You cannot use plastic glue on these guys. Holding the head down onto them, because they only come in two pieces, right? The body and the heads. And because the pieces are so small and fiddly, if you are not really, you know, if you're kind of clumsy like myself sometimes, and y your fingers slip around the, the head piece or the body piece while you're holding it in place then sometimes you get glue all over your fingertips and it's just uh, not good times. Except for that though, the ease of putting these models together for the category how easy was it to put these guys together, gotta give two thumbs up, A plus, because they're only two pieces. So assembly was a snap. You glue them to the base and then you glue them to their heads and that's all you gotta do. Now, cleaning-wise, there was a lot of flash that I hadn't noticed the first time around because these two guys with the fluffy, fuzzy coats, capes, cloaks, coats, oh, let's get those three C words mixed up, have a lot of flash at the bottom that you're going to need to go in with your clippers and just snip off. And if you don't have model clippers, which why don't you, you should, and you have to go with your hobby knife, then it's potentially dangerous to cut yourself. So always use hobby clippers when you're clipping off flash unless you really can't get in because of the angle and then just work it with the tip of your blade. See here's a little piece of flash on the end of 
there. You can see it now on the end of this cape that I'm going to have to snip off after I'm done filming. Also, there was a, like I mentioned, mold lines on the tops of the heads as well as I found some on the shoulder areas of the cape and of the arms. So let's see if we can kind of see where it was before I shaved it off. You can kind of see the mold line over here on this goblin arm. It's not too bad, but you know, it's just something you want to be aware of. So, ease of putting these guys together, I'll give that a B. B minus, because for a brand new modeler or hobby gamer, it's pretty easy. You just glue the head on and glue the thing onto the base. But for somebody who takes seriously, you know, the painting, the cleaning of the model, the putting together, all of that stuff, then you're gonna want to take in, take the extra time to clean up the model. <coughs> clean up those mold lines, clean up that flash, and put it together well. Um, but the look of the model, the, the feel, the cool factor, the rule of cool, I gotta give this model an A+, because just they look so great, and um, you don't have models like this. The poor common goblins don't really get stuff like this, except for the really old character models for like the big bosses. and. Um, and even then, when I think about the Goblin Big Boss, all I can really picture in my mind is the one that rides the wolf. There's a Wolf Rider Big Boss in metal, and then there's common Goblin Shamans in metal. But when I think about the common Goblin Trooper, I don't think I can recall any metal Big Boss characters for them, or boss characters for them. They kind of got the poor end of the deal, the raw end of the deal, when compared to their Night Goblin cousins who get like tons of Goblin Big Bosses, Goblin Shamans, Goblin Characters, Goblin Dioramas, uh, yeah, these poor guys kind of get left out in the dust, blowing in the wind, as they say. So um, these guys are cool. The rule of cool is that they are going to look totally different when they're mixed up with your plastic goblins and your unit of goblins, common goblins. Um, kit bashing though, conversions, leftover bits, there are absolutely no leftover bits. So that gets a whopping zero, two thumbs down, minus, 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 F minus, minus, minus. <clears throat> Just like the new character packs and the clamshells, the plastic ones, don't have any leftover bits, really. Uh, these guys do not have any leftover bits. So if you're looking for extra for conversions or whatever, then you're gonna have to go somewhere else. As a whole though, these models look great. They look like they're gonna be great fun to paint. I'm looking forward to painting them up. And um, it's a shame that nobody uses them really because their, you know, their rules and their points are just very out of balance so whatever cool rules they have for jumping out and and potentially you know killing whatever they're facing it's kind of offset by the fact that number one not many people use common goblins when compared to night goblins night goblins are just the more points effective choice and number two um, the points it costs to take one of these guys is you know not as smart as well spent as points you would be spending in like a night goblin, hundred man night goblin unit with a bunch of big bosses uh, rather than these sneaky skulker guys. So would I personally take these guys in my army? No, unless I'm doing a very fluffy fun, just for fun game, just roll dice kind of thing with your friends. But do I like the models? Yep. My baby termagant outside likes the models. I like the models. Everybody likes the models. Wartzag likes the models. Yeah, man. And um, they're really just for collectors, though. If you like to collect the figures and paint them up, then these guys are going to be a lot of fun for you. For everybody else, though, if you're looking for a competitive build, if you're looking for things that you can save money, build a goblin or orc and goblin army with as little side expenditure as possible. Skip these guys. You don't you don't don't want to you don't need them. You don't want to have them. They're not going to make you happy. But for for other guys like me, um, I love them, and I'm going to have a lot of fun painting them. Especially Batman, right over here at the top. There's a Batman mask in his cape. Do, 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 do. 
All right, so thanks for watching Playas, and we'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to check out Project One Gaming throughout the month of July. You can scan the barcode at the end of my video. Be quiet, baby termagant. I'm plugging my friend. And uh, it'll take you to an email where you can get a 20% discount off of any uh, commission jobs taken in the month of July. And also, he's giving away a free Necron army. Free Necron army, oh my gosh. Check, so check that out on his, um, check out all the details. You can get there from all the information that I'm including below in the description. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Warboss Tape videos. I'm gonna go hunt down that baby term again, and I'll see you in the next video.